Hello, Squawks and family. If you haven't met me, my name is Marvin Campbell. I'm your tribal administrator. And I just want to take a few minutes out of the day today and talk about um, some history of our emergency operations center, uh, the background of it, where we currently are and where we're trying to go. Um, if, you, if you're unaware, our emergency operations center is run by a gentleman named John Taylor. Uh, John's worked for the tribe for several years. Uh, very intelligent man, highly credentialed, um, and in my opinion, I think we're lucky to have him. My first interactions were John, with John were within the first month of taking this job back in July. Um, John was kind of struggling to get a updated comprehensive emergency management plan um, approved through the council. Uh, he had been to the council a couple of times needing to get it approved and it just it wasn't really fitting the bill it wasn't uh, speaking very well and it wasn't easy to understand um, so understanding that this was a problem and had been kicked back a couple of times i dug into it tried to understand it read what he was proposing but also looking back at what we had um, which the previous one was from 2005. Uh, so we'd gone 15 years without uh, updating our cemp uh, not only was it 15 years old, but I also found out that um, there's a couple parts to the CEMP. Part one is the plan itself, which defines kind of roles and responsibilities and authorities within an incident and within a uh, response. Uh, part two is a group of more of exact process of how we would respond to specific disasters. And those plans would be approved by something called the Emergency Management Homeland Security Committee. Um, but looking into it, that committee had never been formally recognized by resolution from our council. Um, and the committee, even though they were meeting, um, didn't have bylaws. Um, and, and they were still meeting. It was happening. And it's a group of directors and some of the leaders from some of the other enterprises. Um, so it was actually just kind of holistically a bigger issue than just updating the CEMP. We needed to kind of start over and, and go back and identify how, where we were falling short and what we needed to update. Um, the good news was seeing the struggle that was going on while John was in under law enforcement, public safety, um, I moved John to be supervised by Robert Santos, um, who is a gentleman who worked for the tribe, uh, who had a, a knowledge and a background of emergency management, he was he was involved in some relief efforts, some natural disasters around the world. And so he was a great resource for John to work with. And those two working together got a new updated CEMP approved in November of last year. Um, so that's kind of the history of where we were. Um, to tell you where we are currently, um, we're still in this declared disaster and we're fighting this pandemic. But another background that I find it important for everybody to understand is John had a draft proposal, proposed plan on pandemic response. And that plan has now been shared with over a dozen other tribes and small towns, and has been successful in getting us some of the supplies that we were able to get that other people weren't, uh, specifically the masks that we were able to hand out. Um, that's because we could give our plan to state and federal entities that were offering supplies and they they gave them to us and so that's why i would tell you that that john's been a tremendous resource um, kind of talk about where we're going or what you're about to see and just kind of give some clarity so friday the casino is going to do a soft opening and monday the casino will be open and i'm sure it would be logical to think well when is the tribe opening or what's the next step for us um, i would just caution you that or just help you understand that we are gonna be cautious moving forward. Um, we're still gonna ask that you keep two gatherings from within your own household. And I'm gonna ask that the reservation remain just to residents. Um, and the purpose is, I just wanna see what happens as a result of the casino opening. Uh, I wanna be safe and I wanna make sure if the numbers increase within Mason County or Thurston County, um, if that happens within a week and we have a spike, then we're not ready to, to open up our community. We're not ready to open up the Child Development Center. We're not ready for a lot of things yet. Um, but if the numbers stay relatively low and stay the average that they've been for the last few weeks, 
then we're going to look at opening some things up and bringing workers back to uh, work that we can. So that's the plan um, is to allow the casino opening. We're going to wait a week before we make a determination. But I do hope by June 1st we see things change and kind of get back to somewhat of a new normal. I do believe going forward throughout the summer, you're going to see social distancing at places everywhere. Um, I know there was news in today from some of the experts about maybe not being ready to open schools on time. And we have a group of in the education department working for plans if that should happen. Um, we're going to have a plan to be ready to teach some of our own kids if that's the, the, the case. I don't want our kids being held up if this pandemic carries on that long. Uh, we're going to be ready, but we're going to hope for the best. Um, so that's kind of in regards to the emergency management, where we're going forward or how we're going to approach it. Um, some things behind the scenes, there are recovery efforts being um, developed and recovery efforts, meaning grants and things that we've been given to help offset the cost of things that we bought or things we spent money on at the health clinic and some of the other places. And we did receive tribal funds from the CARES Act and those funds are to be used for response and recovery and preparation for a potential second wave. And so there's a group, a team that has gotten together to brainstorm what's the best way to do that. Um, I just I want you to understand that we're taking every step we can to keep everybody safe, but also be ready in case there is another wave. Um, there are a couple of things I want to kind of ask everybody to, to think about. And that's one, one of the, the things that they can say for certainty that has impacted people the most as far as mortality rate or how severe this disease is, this virus is, um, is health. And that's something that we can control. So I, I would ask that you start to consider that um, because I don't think this is the last virus issue we're ever gonna see in our lifetime. And so if you wanna be ready, we need to be healthier. Um, the other thing that I don't hear a lot about is you're gonna hear about contract, contact tracing. Um, but I think as indiv individually, as we start to open things up, we need to start keeping aware, or even if you need to keep a log of where you go each day or who you encounter with, um, because if this starts to spike up again, it'd be easy to know, you know, and isolate people that may be at risk. So I'd encourage you that as things open up and you choose to go um, partake in either the casino or when restaurants open back up and things like that, that you be mindful of where you go each day and who you go around. Um, I think that's going to help should this uh, stuff uh, spike or continue. Um, and then just as a personal note, I wanted to add a couple of things. That's um, been a blessing in this job. Um, I've had the opportunity to serve with some great teams. I've deployed to the Middle East with Navy SEALs. I've served on three aircraft carriers, and I've done two stints at Navy boot camp and worked with over 700 drill instructors. And so I've worked with teams and people who work hard. And I could just tell you that coming back here and seeing the way that people have responded during this crisis, um, it, I could definitely attest that crisis reveals people, it reveals leadership and it reveals their character. And I've seen some awesome things happen um, to the people that serve us, um, to watch Parks and Rec step up to serve meals to our kids and to the adults, Child Development Center serve people outside the community. IEI supply clams and things, hand sanitizer. Um, the casino has offered every bit of help that we could get um, to help kind of barricade the reservation. And they, Ramon down there has offered many other things. Um, the health clinic, just to see the different things that they've offered to, you know, bring pharmacy, to bring prescriptions out to cars, to open up a window, um, law enforcement to go and stand, basically a gate guard. It's not glamorous, it's not fun, but they've saw the need and we found ways to protect our people and it's been great to see people step up and to see good leadership things being revealed in this crisis and so i feel very blessed i feel just amazed at what what we've been able to accomplish and so um i would just ask that you consider the things that we do have and the things that have been made available and realize that there are so many blessings here and I trust that we're going to keep growing, we're going to keep getting better, and we're going to come out a better team because of this pandemic. Um, like I said in, in the last video that the council did, it's going to be a marathon, and we just need to be ready. We need to be mentally tough and just have resilience and 
ready to be strong for the elders and be strong for our youth and just be a great example. Thank you for your time.